Hey everybody, it's me, Steve Schnee, the CD Junkie. On this episode of CD Junkie, I'm going to talk about my top 50 favorite albums from 1982. I'm not going to show you CDs, I'm just going to quickly go through uh, numbers 21 through 50, and I'll focus a little bit on numbers 1 through 20. But just let me preface this by saying, uh, the, the titles I have here on this list are things I was listening to in 1982. S there's some great albums from the year that I don't have on my list uh, because maybe I started listening to them in 83 or 87 or 95. Uh, you know, things that maybe I missed the first time around or I ignored or it took me a while to get into that music. I have to tell you, there's also albums that I maybe forgot to put on the list and more than likely everything you're going hey how come that's not on this list it's because i forgot to put it on but this is such a great list of titles here albums that were so so exciting uh but i'll also say that there are things that i purposely left off such as the clash combat rock every clash album before that would have gone in my top 10 or top 20 but Combat Rock was just a big letdown for me. It didn't even make my top 50. Uh, same thing with uh, the English Beat, Special Beat Service. Eh, you know, whatever. But so much great music was released that year. And it was the year I graduated from high school. I mean, there was so much hope and excitement for the future. Uh, little did I know. But I also want to say I'm an emotional listener. So I attach a lot of the music I listen to to the people and the places uh, that surrounded me during that time in my life. My friends, my family, you know, my, my folks were still alive. My grandma and grandpa were still alive. All of these wonderful people in my life, they had nothing to do with this music, but they had everything to do with, you know, life being wonderful at th that time. You know, my siblings and my friends from high school, you know, there was Chuck and Jeff and Fred and the other Jeff and so many great people, Cindy. And, and I, I want to stop mentioning these folks because I know I'm going to forget names, but every one of them was important. And every one of them I think about when I play this music, it just takes me back to such a wonderful time. So let's start right now. I'm just going to tell you uh, numbers 21 through 50 uh, really quick. And let's see if any of these uh, resonate with you at all. And, and these are kind of not really in any order because I, it's hard for me to pick out uh, 21 to 50, or it's hard to, for me to pick out number one through 20. So I put them in order of just like when I thought about them, or you know maybe thinking about, well, maybe I, I didn't listen to this one as much as that one, that type thing. So here's number 21 through 50. You got Upstairs at Eric's by Yazoo, uh, Quartet by Ultravox, uh, Avalon by Roxy Music. I love the album more now than I did back then. Fun Boy 3, self-titled. Uh, Thomas Dolby, The Golden Age of Wireless. Five Deep, or V Deep, by the Boomtown Rats. Not their best album, uh, which means it's down lower on my list. Squeeze, Sweets from a Stranger, same thing. They're, the previous three albums are all top five, top ten for me. Sweets from a Stranger was a big drop down from uh, East Side Story, but still a really good album. Heartbeats and Triggers from Translator. Now Then by Stiff Little Fingers. Uh, Tunes of Two Cities by The Residents. That's kind of a sort of a, a, a black sheep there. Uh, the Lexicon of Love by ABC. You know, and you know when I love an album like Lexicon of Love or Now Then by Stiff Little Fingers or whatever. I mean, I love these albums. So the top 20 is super important to my life. Uh, you know, both, you know, it just brings me joy and stuff. But let's get back to the list here. Talk Talk, The Party's Over. Uh, Friend or Foe by Adam Ann. Shabu Shaba by NXS. Uh, Orange Juice, Rip It Up, their second album. Much better than the first, although I love the first. Uh, Elvis Costello and the Attractions, Imperial Bedroom. Uh, Modern English, After the Snow, the album with I Melt With You. Uh, Madness, The Rise and Fall. Love Madness, that was kind of a drop down. Psychedelic Furs, Forever Now. Asia, the debut album, uh, you know, the one with The Heat of the Moment and um, Only Time Will Tell. Joe Jackson, Night and Day. Men at Work. Uh, business as usual. That actually came out in 1981 in Australia, but it came out in, I think, the U.S. in 82, so that's why I added it to my list. Of course, the wonderful Sparks, Angst in My Pants. I love that album to death, but like I said, these aren't in order. This isn't like number 43 on my list. These are all clumped together. I've listened to them tons of times. Uh, Hawks, 30 Seconds Over Otho. Uh, After the Fire, Battery is Not Included. That was the album uh, that they put out in the UK before Der Commissar. Uh, and Der Commissar is the biggest song. It also basically broke up the band 
Uh, but uh, after the fire, it's produced by Mac, I think, and has a really sort of Brian May uh, uh, guitar sound uh, and, you know, very sort of uh, synth pop and prog rock at the same time. Ice House, Primitive Man. China Crisis, Difficult Shapes and Passive Rhythms. Midnight Oil, uh, 10987654321, also known as 10 to 1. Uh, Gang of Four, Songs of the Free, and Josie Cotton, Convertible Music. All of these great albums. I still listen to these albums today. I still listen to tracks from these. I still put 80 shows together and uh, take songs from all of these albums. Just wonderful. And I still talk about them as if these albums are new, fresh, and exciting. But let's get into the top 20. Again, this is just sort of a loose order. I think maybe like the top five, top 10 is closer to what I feel today. But yesterday it was completely different and it might be completely different tomorrow. And when I say completely different, I mean, you know, maybe like number five will be number three and number four will be number five, you know, stuff like that. So we're going to start with number 20, Positive Noise, Change of Heart. Positive Noise first album came out and it's kind of a a dark goth, maybe like a Joy Division feel to it, very post-punk. But Chains of Heart was uh, uh, much more upbeat and uh, had lots of great songs on it. Uh, number 19, Huang Chung. Huang Chung was the original incarnation of the group that became Wang Chung. Uh, still, it, same main two guys, which was Jack Hughes and Nick Feldman. But Nick Feldman was then known as Nick Despig. But a very different sound, but you can still tell it's the same band. Some amazing tracks on that album. Just, yeah, it's wonderful. Uh, Strange Advance, Worlds Away, their debut album. A Canadian synth-pop band. If you love Ultravox and things like that, you're probably going to love Strange Advance if you haven't heard them. Uh, number 17 is Rhythm of Youth by Men Without Hats, their debut album. Not a big fan of uh, Safety Dance in terms of, you know, it's definitely not their best song. The Safety Dance caught on and it's great and they had that success and they built upon that success uh, and they're still known for that. But that album and other albums just filled with a bunch of great songs. Number 16 is the power pop band Shoes and their album Boomerang. Number 15 is The Swingers, Counting the Beat. The Swingers was an offshoot of Split Ends. Phil Judd, who was an early Split Ends, formed The Swingers, put out an album called Practical Jokers in Australia, and they rejigged it for the U.S. market and put it out the following year, here in 1982, as Counting the Beat, which was the name of their big hit single in Australia. Uh, Nick the Knife by Nick Lowe is number 14. Number 13 is Tropical Gangsters by Kid Creole and the Coconuts. That album was released in the U.S. as Wise Guys. It's an album that you know introduced me to a lot of great sort of world music rhythms that inspired me to explore different styles of music, anything from salsa to funk to soul uh, and to Latin music and just really, really fantastic album. Number 12 was the self-titled album from Marshall Crenshaw. Great singer-songwriter. Number 11 is Four Out of Five Doctors, Second Opinion. Incredible band from Washington, D.C. Still, I still talk I still talk about all these bands today. But let's get into the top 10 here. Number 10, The Gift by The Jam. This was the band's final album. Now, all of their previous albums, except for the debut album, would have made my top five or top three on you know lists for that year. Uh, not a huge fan of their debut album, although it is great. Uh, and The Gift had a couple weaker tracks on it, but it had some of their best tracks on it. So it, it's in my top 10 for sure. You know, it's the album with, you know, Town Called Malice and, and Running on the Spot and Ghosts. I mean, you can't get better than that. I mean, those songs are just brilliant. Uh, number nine on my list is Depeche Mode, A Broken Frame, their second album. A lot of people don't like this record. It's a very different record for them. It's more of a dark album, and it's not as sophisticated as they would become. But I, I just have an emotional attachment to that album, uh, which that's my favorite Depeche Mode album still to this day. Number eight is Mental As Anything, If You Leave Me, Can I Come Too?, this is a U.S. only compilation uh, featuring m many tracks from their Cats and Dogs album, which is an Australian album, plus some tracks from uh, a few older releases, some of them remixed for the U.S. market. If you love sort of Nick Lowe's side of Rock Pile Meet Squeeze, you'll love Mental as Anything. Number seven is Shuttered Room, the debut album from The Fix. This is the album with Stander Fall, uh, Red Skies, Lost Plains, lots of great songs on this 
Uh, number six is the debut self-titled album from A Flock of Seagulls. This is the album with Iran, Space Age Love Song, Telecommunication, Modern Love is Automatic. Fantastic album. It's just wonderful. Number five is To Raye by Kevin Rowland and Dexy's Midnight Runners. Incredible album. I know that everyone just knows Come on Eileen. Again, that's not the best song on the album. It's so inventive, so creative. Nobody was creating music like that uh, at that time. And nobody, not even Dexys, has been able to recreate what that album was. And it still sounds magical to this very day. Number four, Haircut 100, Pelican West. Incredible. These guys, late teens, early 20s, creating music far beyond their years. Amazing. Love Plus One, Favorite Shirts, uh, Lemon Fire Brigade, Love's Got Me in Triangles, Calling Captain Autumn. What what an album, what an album. Number three, Blanket of Secrecy, Ears Have Walls. It's also known as Walls Have Ears, depending on which side of the uh, ocean you're on. Incredible. This band should have been huge, but decisions were made and they... Oh, just an incredible album that mixes great pop songwriting with, you know, some electronics in there, some acoustic. Uh, and it's just, it's wonderful. I can't believe that this album uh, is not beloved by millions of people. It's such an amazing record. Number two, Split Ends, Time and Tide. What an album. First time I heard it, I said, oh my God. This is so different from Wyata and True Colors and Frenzy and everything that came before. It was much more rhythmic and muscular and, and there was much more depth to it. And first time I heard it, I go, what are they doing? Second time I heard it, it became my favorite Spadenz album. My number one, I would say at this exact moment, my favorite album of 1982 is English Settlement by XTC. I probably forgot something. So what I've done here is I've put together a medley featuring just a little soundbite of one song from each of the albums in my top 20. So it'll give you an idea or maybe remind you about how great this music is. Sit back, relax, enjoy, and I'll see you on the other side. I got the message of the message 
Anyway, that's it. That's my top 50 of 1982. Why don't you let me know your favorites of 1982 in the comments below. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Remember to like, comment, share, subscribe to ring that bell for future notifications. And until the next time, remember me. I'm Steve Schnee, the CD Junkie.